welcome back to opening day of spring training and well as you can see it's bump day for Blake Snell as we are going to try to kick this season off with a bang hopefully be at least somewhat successful here in spring training and we've got some interesting guys up with us Jackson Holiday, Ian Happ, Benny Montgomery, Zach Veen, Michael Toglia, Ormin Bernabel, Nolan Jones obviously he was on the team last year exciting new players in Happ and oh Matt Chapman who these guys are going to slot right in to this lineup. Doesn't really matter where. I think I might have Chapman in the four. Maybe Hap at two or one. Maybe we'll have him at the one. And yeah, we're going to kick this thing off right, hopefully. A lot of potential in this team now, actually. At least more than there was. Um, get happen here. So against the lefties, we'll keep Tovar against righties. I think you know who's going to be starting. Jackson Holiday. Oh, yeah. Holiday will be in the nine hole against righties, and hopefully, he can do some damage. Um, I want to also work in Montgomery and Veen to see what they got. To start off, though, I think we'll keep it like this. Um, Hunter Goodman will slot in. Toglia as well. Bernabel. As we saw at the end of last season, Bernabel actually um, he had some pretty big hits in clutch situations in that double A championship run that we had but you know I think it's only right to start this one off with let's just do a full game and season two of this franchise Blake Snell on the mound I think we're going to do some damage this year Let's see if we can. Looks like we will be at the plate first, and we will see Ian Happ straight off the bat. No pun intended, of course, but Zach Gallon, he's a pretty good pitcher. We're going to swing on the first pitch. That's driven down to the warning track, but I believe that's Corinth and Carroll out there. Nothing's getting past him, but... Look at this starting lineup. It looks a lot different. A lot different. Obviously, Jackson Holiday will not be the starter at the start of the year. We just want to see what he has. Ian Happ, though. New addition. And Matt Chapman, as we saw in the four slot. That is a huge addition to the defense and the offense. As Daza, our, I would say, main O. OPS or not OPS but on base guy last year he was really good in the leadoff in the two slot where we had him um, got on base a ton for us I think almost 40% of the time he got on base it might have been in the 350 range but that one is going to be a pop out to right field or yeah right field not left I believe that's I don't know if it was Jake McCarthy out there. I don't think so. But as well as this Diamondbacks team, they should be pretty talented as well. See what they got this year. Obviously they're a division rival. So that's pretty big as Crone will pop it up and we will head to the bottom of the first to see this newly hopefully 
talented defense. I, I think it will be. We also got Martin Perez. We know he can strike guys out. But Snell's just got that different type of stuff. As <laughs> It's not too different from last year when Jake McCarthy's, you know, ripping one right back up the middle. First pitch. But that's all right. We'll settle in. It's Nothing's on the line here in spring training. We're just trying to see where these, this team's at. We obviously know we won't be probably fighting for a playoff spot again, but you never know. Teams surprise every year. Why not us? I mean, I doubt it, but we will see what happens. We got some good pitching depth, and that was a hanging, hanging changeup. Did not like that. Josh Rojas is fighting this thing. Maybe let's go with some high heat. And he goes around first K for Blake Snell in a Colorado Rockies uniform. As manager tip. We'll see if McCarthy takes off. It'll be hard to pick him off with that speed. Both right and left outfielders for... The Diamondbacks just got so much speed between Carroll and McCarthy. It is ridiculous. Actually, I don't know. They might have Corbin in center. They should, in my opinion. And then Gurriel in left. I don't know what they have going today. As that's the first time we'll see Jackson Holiday make a defensive appearance. Nice play across the diamond. We take a look. No, Drew Jones is out in center. I didn't even realize that when they showed the original lineup. Jordan Lawler, their shortstop prospect. Ketel Marte at second. Rivera at third. And Christian Walker. I'm pretty sure he went around on that, but it's fine. But... Obviously, the thing we got to watch out with with Snell is he is going to put guys on base. And we need to make sure we remember that as Jackson Holiday somehow makes a fantastic catch in shallow center field. It didn't even make sense, but what a snag. The 19-year-old, maybe 20 now. The kid is here to stay, as this guy, who's now up to the plate, is also here to stay for the next three years. Matt Chapman he was a first-round pick back in 2014, I believe, by the A's. I don't know if that's exactly true, but he played on the A's for the early part of his career. Um, but hopefully Chapman brings some much-needed power and contact to this team it's about a 25 home run a year kind of guy and we need it 10 plus everywhere and that's why we're looking at Jackson Holiday to see what he can do uh, Zach Veen later on and that one is a bad swing on our part so Matt Chapman goes down striking out a little bit unfortunate. It was on us, though. Just a bad swing as this one's going to be lined by McMahon to right field. And that's your first hit of the season for the Colorado Rockies. Ryan McMahon here in the top of the second. It's now it's Chris Bryant's turn to see what he can do. But there, there's a lot of new... Faces, not a lot, but there are a good amount of new faces on this team. Um, I think we will definitely be watching the minors a lot more than we did this last year. We didn't have as many prospects as I guess we liked or were looking at bringing up. We still have a lot of good ones. Romo and Amador we saw a lot of in the latter part of last season as they went on to um, take care of the double-A championship 
actually winning it for the Yard Goats, which is our double-A team. And that was good to see. Obviously, Romo didn't have the amount of success Amador had, but man, oh, man. They got it going and obviously won. And that was huge because we need any sort of winning in this franchise as that we can get. Like, success is going to start. If it's going to start from the bottom and go up, then we will take it. Usually you'd want it from the top going down. Just success everywhere, but... As Jerickson Pro 4 lays into it! See you later! Jerickson Pro 4, 422 to center field, and he takes Zach Gallon yard. Speaking of yard goats, Jerickson Pro 4 is one of them. Oh, yeah! That was a towering shot. He knew it off the bat. Just perfect launch angle. 102 almost off the bat. And it was gone quickly. My oh my. It was way out there past the center field wall. And just like that. We were up 2-0, and Diaz tried to get into that one. We were late on it. Diaz, another guy, um, kind of like Blackman was in this free agency, might be a guy that we let go or trade as whenever Drew Romo comes up. If, he, if Romo makes that big jump like we hope he will, then Diaz will probably be on the move as that's a poor swing there. Way out in front of that one. See if we can dial it back. And Gallon goes way inside as Jackson Holiday is on deck for us. We'll see if we'll see him in the top of the second here. As Diaz rips into one. That one's to deep left, and that one's gone. Are you kidding me? Where was this last season? I, this new season vibes, people. The Rockies, we might not be playoff pushers, but we're going to be in the midst of hopefully the middle of the pack and competing in these games. Because, obviously, we've got Jackson Holiday, Adel Amador, two infield prospects that we hope are the future of this franchise. And they should be. Along with Romo at, behind the dish. Zach Veen in the outfield. We're just going to see what happens. I mean... All you, you, we really just got to wait and see how these guys develop because there's not much else we can do. As Gallon winds up. And this one, almost. That was almost a fantastic hit right down the first baseline. Probably would have been two as we fight another changeup off. Just trying to get anything going here for Jackson Holiday. Good cuts, just not the results we're looking for. Obviously, you can see that contact and power are just... And even the vision, it's, it's just a little low right now. And, I mean, we're fighting off a lot of these, which is really good. Showing we can compete at this level with him. I don't think he's ready yet. The stats don't say he's ready. And he'll be ready when he's ready. When we call him up, we know he'll be ready to go. And he'll make an instant impact as we fight that cutter off. Fighting everything off here. Look at those pitches. That was pitch number 11 in this at bat. Jackson Holiday doing an unbelievable job on this at bat. Incredible. 
Fights another one. Probably could have taken that for a ball. There's a lot of them that we could have taken for a ball that we haven't. <coughs> we need to lay off when those come. It just It's so hard to read from this camera. This is pitch number 15, I believe. And it's going to be an out. But what an at-bat to debut here in string, uh, spring training for Jackson Holiday. As we have a two-run shot from Jerks and Profar. And then Elias Diaz goes over to left field and gives that some love. Go with the high heat. Out and away. And it's a perfect little pop-up to Chris Bryant. Who comes down to retire the first here in the second. It's it's going to be interesting in the, the bottom of this... Uh, division with the Padres and Dodgers obviously everyone knows is going to be at the top or at least ex expects them to be at the top as this one's going to drop for Rivera um, we're if we can be as long as we're not the last place team in the division I'm going to consider that a success and we're going in the right direction as we get Moreno to pop up to crone and foul ground, and that is two down here in the second. It's now Drew Jones. We saw him last season. The bright young star in the league as well. That outfield is so talented, man. I don't know where Carroll is, though, as that should have been a strike, in my opinion. But... Of course, I'm not behind the dish calling the, Outside, the shots here, so. I, I don't know. Maybe they have Carroll, you know, resting or something. I don't know. I think he'd be out here as we walk Drew Jones. We tried to get him to chase on the curveball. He does not and puts some serious speed on the base pass. What? Base pass. So, we'll try to limit damage here as Lawler looks at that one. Trying to get strikeouts here. And there it is, Blake Snell. I don't know what Lawler was looking at there, but he was way out in front of that fastball. But... We're back at it as Ian Happ rips one. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's why you signed Ian Happ. Come on now. That's his first home run in a Rockies uniform. So we see Snell getting the first few strikeouts for us. And Ian Happ. We are demolishing Zach Gallen right now. 409. That one is also just driven right back up to center field over the wall. It was right down the middle. I mean, he. Gallen just laid it out for us to hit that thing on a tee. Not really sure what he's doing. That's the second time he's done that. He did it with Profar as well as this one, Daza. Easy play for Rivera. And that'll be one down here in the third. But now CJ Crone, who is not a Rocky in real life anymore, up to bat for us. We are not going to trade him, at least not right now. We could still be sellers at the deadline. I'm not opposed to getting more prospects on this team. If we can get younger, younger with our arms in the pen or in our starting rotation, and then, of course, at, at the plate. I mean, I'm all, f all, I'm all for it. As we're going to look to see if Matt Chapman can't get his first hit as a Colorado Rocky. Oh, that was the one to do it. That slider broke a little more than I thought it would. A little early on it as well. And 
Chapman drives one. It's, I don't think it's going to have the distance as Guriel is under it and makes the play go to the bottom of the third. I think we'll start to warm up some guys. We're not going to take Blake too far into this. Um, Joe Rock. I think we should bring up Jordan Hicks as well. Ryan Rollison will probably be next. I want to see some of these guys that played a lot of games in the triple, uh, AAA for us last season, including Rollison and Joe Rock, who were both starters for us, and they did pretty well as that changeup hung really high. But need to see as McCarthy goes down looking. Third strikeout for Blake Snell. That one just looked too easy. But yeah, I want to see some of the minor league guys that we had last season. See if we can, if we can't bring them up to be in those long relieving roles. As Crone flips it to Blake Snell, who covers, and that's two down here in the third. Efficient for Snell. Pitch count run a little high, but spring training first time since you know November even September for some of these guys we've actually been in a games so obviously we'll have Jordan Hicks big free agent acquisition he can throw heat we know it that fastball gets up there in the 100s he'll be dangerous out of the pen obviously we lost Daniel Bard Unfortunately, I talked him up so much last year, and then I trade him away. But we did get, I believe, another starting pitcher. I kind of forget. I'll have to go look back at it. Um, I'll know who we got once I see the name. I think it was a starting pitcher, though. Is he a starting pitcher or reliever? But Bard is gone. Signed Rosenthal as a replacement and I don't know I think he'll be good enough like there's no reason he shouldn't be like plus our relievers have gotten so much better I mean Hicks is gonna be a guy we play a lot in that medium relieving role hopefully at least with Perez Snell and Matthew Boyd all coming over via free agency. Hopefully those guys can take us farther into games. Five, six innings a start. Hopefully. And Chris Bryant on base here in the fourth. And next inning I might start making some some substitutions here. As obviously we know where Profar went the last time he was up to bat, and he was looking for another one. A little early on that one. A little bit early. But Merrill Kelly now in to pitch, and that one is double play potential. Profar runs decent, and he will be safe. No inning, inning any double play there, but it was close. It was really close. As Elias Diaz, or Elias Diaz, back at the plate. We also know where he went on his first at bat. So, I will say, compared to last season's spring training, where it was like, you no know, God, you know, where. How bad is this team really going to be? It's We got some hope this time. And Elias Diaz. That's out to left. And it's just short. It just didn't have the carry. I thought it was going to. And I think we. We are going to bring in Jordan Hicks. We are going to start this off with. Some free agent stuff. Um, we will get. Rollison warming up here and then maybe we'll start going down 
into here with Jimenez. Obviously, Rosenthal is down there. Get Marquez some runs. We'll see what happens this game. Obviously, we're already into the bottom of the fourth. And I think we're going to make some adjustments. Jerkson, we know what he's going to be. Same with Daza. I think we're going to take Daza out. Montgomery's going to come in. I think that'll be the only change we make for now. As you oh see the velo for Jordan Hicks. And man, it is a huge pop. So much more explosive than anything we had in the pen last season. I mean, his stuff just comes so fast out of his hand. It's out of his hand and it's right in the mouth of these hitters, so... They're going to have to keep up. As we can see, Christian Walker having some trouble keeping up. Trying to stay on these, these fastballs here. He's late on a lot. And that's what we want to see. That one was a little bit iffy on my part. Oh, how did he get that? How did he get a piece? Obviously, though, with with Hicks, if I'm not mistaken, gave up a decent amount of earned runs last year for the Cardinals. Hopefully, we can get that number down. Three balls, two strikes. I believe the walks were a little bit high as well, but, I mean, there's no reason why he can't be a great reliever for us. He has all the tools to do so. Got the velo. Got the arm talent. We just got to put it together. As McMahon comes up to make a play. Marte lined it right at him. Came up. Grabbed it. Two down in the fourth. <laughs> he doesn't even want to know what this man has in store. We're going to go slider away. It's a cold strike. Jordan Hicks. Welcome to the club. As Jackson Holiday is back up to bat. Obviously, last time we had the 15 or 16 pitch AB, which was fantastic. I mean, just showing he really looks for that pitch to hit. Keeps fighting to stay in the count. Running up that pitch count is so key as well, and especially when you got a guy like Zach Gallen who is a really talented pitcher, an ace for the Diamondbacks. That's why he started today. But he just kept taking them as a little ground out for Holiday is what it is. We'll see more of him, at, uh, of course, as this keeps going through spring training here. I don't know how much of Ian Happ we'll actually see in spring training, Probably just be in and out of the lineup. Try to m move these other guys in here, especially our outfielding prospects like Veen and um, Montgomery, who we did just put in. And I believe he'll be up in this two slot here for Daza. And he is. I believe he's still 20 at the start of the season. He might be 21. Good speed. Really good speed, actually. Um, great fielder. He's got some good contact. He can get on base. We just want that power to go up a little bit. And maybe with these this new coaching staff, that can happen. One, two. That is smoked right at Christian Walker. Benny Montgomery will get there, though. As I said, that speed jumps out. I don't believe he has the highest steal, 42. Wish that would be a little higher. As that slider hung and we just missed it. We were got a little bit too eager to jump on it. We know what Crone would have done with it. And that one will be an easy catch. Drew Jones sits under it. 
Easy snag. Could do it in his sleep. Don't know how much we'll see, more we'll see of Hicks. Don't want to run up the count too much. Might not. I don't think I'll go past 30 pitches here. But try to see if we can get through this inning. As Moreno is a quick out. Two pitches, one out. Easy peasy for Jordan Hicks. As that's a called ball. Which I guess he's given some payback for the strikeout he called in the last inning, maybe. Trying to call it somewhat consistently as that is a nice bunt and it'll roll foul. As we'll try to go with some high heat. See if we can't get him swinging and we do. Number two on the day for Jordan Hicks. As Drew Jones strikes out. And Lawler just hangs on. Doesn't go fully around. He should have swung at that one. That was right down the middle. Let's see if we can't get him out in these next two pitches. And we do! Two strikeouts in that inning. That'll be the last you see of Jordan Hicks, though. But what a great appearance. You love to see it. And I think we're going to bring in Joe Rock. See if he can't rock the house. Yeah, that was bad. I think after Chapman, we will bring in some more guys switch around our lineups already gone through two at bats each some of these guys getting a third swing at it you know we're not trying to burn these guys out no injuries please and that was horrible that was a really bad at bat there from us um but yeah let's let's get some guys in here maybe we'll wait to the end of this inning end of this half inning We'll let McMahon get another another rip at this thing because he is a very key player for us on defense and offense. As he pops out, shallow infield, easy play by Jordan Lawler. And that is a quick two outs here in the top of the sixth. Oh, I believe we, it's just a hit for Chris Bryant on the – day as that one is ripped down the third baseline we're gonna try to push two here I don't think Gurley has got it he doesn't even go for it and that will be a very successful three at bats for Chris Bryant hopefully he can stay healthy for us again he was pretty healthy or healthy last season um, but didn't do much on the stat sheet I mean Neither did most guys, but Jerks and Profar have yourself a day. His third RBI brings Chris Bryant home, and we are up 5 0 in the top of the sixth. Probably be the last at bat you'll see of Elias Diaz, and we're just. Oh, actually, stop, stop, stop. We're ripping these first pitch. These first pitches we're getting. Hopefully we can do the same with Holiday. We're in a little bit of a groove finding these in the zone. As that was put right down the middle. I don't think we got enough on it. We did not. Drew Jones, too much speed in that outfield. It doesn't fall, but that's all right. Good inning again for the bats. And I'm pretty sure I just declined. Yeah, I did. Joe Rock will be put in the game. It's a little bit of a spam seizure moment I just had but I think Hunter Goodman's going to come in for Diaz at some point right now though Zach Veen is going to come in for Chris Bryant warm up some more guys uh, yeah why not go Jimenez another free agent guy I think got Tovar, Goodman, 
I think we'll bring in Toglia. So Toglia and Veen will come in in the bottom of the sixth. For us. And... We'll see if we bring anyone up to pinch hit. As that one will be an easy play for Joe Rock. And that's a quick one down here in the bottom of the sixth. We saw a little bit of Joe Rock, I think, when we were playing um, in the AAA games late in the season with Veen and Holiday. Speaking of Veen, he will make the play here. Right on the foul line. Way to get over in range. Easy play for the most part, but try to be consistent on defense as best we can. As this one's also lined to Veen. He's getting some quick work here as I don't think they had anything out to right field when Chris Bryant was out there. And, you know, we switch him and they go right at the rookie. See if he's really about it and... For the most part, he is, as Christian Walker literally just murdered someone. Don't know why they don't have fences Ooh, up in here in Arizona, but it is what it is. Is That one is ripped out to left. Pro far ranges. Bad reaction, but he gets back to it. Makes the play as Nolan Jones, real life, got off to a hot, hot start when he was brought up to the majors. Hasn't done much as of recent from my knowledge, but good player, good defender. He can really run. And Benny Montgomery now back up at the dish. Fielder's choice on the first at bat. As we had take a huge swing at that slider. Another one. Scott Barlow is killing Montgomery with these sliders. As he got a hold of that slurve, but, man, three pitches, same spot. We could not figure it out. As here's the first at-bat for Michael Toglia. Not, he's not a bad player. It's just... I think we have better guys, especially CJ Crone, obviously, who plays Toglia's position. I mean, he can play DH as well. I mean, Crone's not, you know, a known gold glover, but I think that was enough of Joe Rock for us. Just try to mix in some guys here, see what we can do. And I think, like I said, what we were going to do, as I just remembered, is Warming Bernabel is going to come in for Matt Chapman. He played a massive role, like I said, in that double-A championship, especially against, um, I believe it was New Hampshire. Oh, I can't remember the name. Like New Hampshire Catfish or something stupid. But he played a huge role in it. We're going to give him a chance here, see what he's got. I mean, you might as well when you have the chance here in spring training. Nothing's on the line. So, same with Ryan Rollison. He was one of our top pitchers in AAA last season, and might as well give him the chance as well to see what he can do. As he strikes out Seth Beer. Welcome to the big leagues, Ryan Rollison. As Diamondbacks make another change, Carson Kelly now pinch hitting and probably taking over the catching role. Curveball, swing, miss. Two batters, two strikeouts. Ryan Rollison, he's got something. Not a ton of velo, but the control and the break. On these breaking balls is fantastic at the moment. As he'll now attack Moreno. Bernabel over at third. Long throw across the diamond, but he makes the play. Quick and efficient seventh inning there.
But Ryan Rollison did not expect that. And we will see Warming Bernabel up here. First plate appearance for us in spring training. And it'll be up against Madison Baumgartner. Obviously the formal or former um, world championship winner or champion with the Giants as that one stayed in. We rounded, set, rounded first, but we're going to stay as that throw was coming in hot. So warming Bernabel. One pitch, and he's swinging. It went down that third baseline perfectly. And I think, actually, we're going to give someone a bit of a shitty situation here. But I think we'll bring in Tovar for McMahon. Tovar wasn't too bad last season for us. Obviously, no home runs is not a good stat. But good defender for the most part. He was decently efficient at it. At the ball. But he will drive it into right. Very nice start here in the top of the eighth. Bumgarner struggling as he did, as, well, as he has been in real life for the past, like, three or four years. Don't know why he still plays. Arms, the arm's just not there anymore. It really isn't. What can he do offensively is the key. We'll see the development as that's a swinging bunt. Veen's got wheels. He does not get there, but he advances the runner. It was a close play at first. And I think we're going to take out Profar here as well. For, yeah, Hunter Goodman. So pro far now out guy that had three of our five RBIs, including that two run shot in the second, I believe. And Hunter Goodman comes in and rips one straight away. We're gonna tag up here. Bernabel is gonna get home. Tovar barely reaches third. Not a ton of speed, but he got there. Diaz, I think he'll just stay in. We already brought in Goodman, so we don't have another catching option right now. Wish we had Romo. We probably should bring him up at least at some point in spring training. But we will see about that one. Because he's not as like ready if we really needed him as a Holiday or a Veen is. So, as that one's lined, caught, and we'll go to the bottom of the eighth here. I think we'll have Ryan Rillison go one more batter here. He was impressive last inning. See if he can keep it up this inning. That one will just fade out into the stands for Drew Jones. Keeps him alive. Try to go high and inside again here and see if we can't get him swinging. And how do you stay on that? There's no way. Well, and now we're to a full count. Try and make him swing at something. Put this in play. And he does. Zach Veen ranging. Makes the play. It made it look easy. Good reaction. And nice play there by Zach Veen. That is now Lawler who's still in the game. As he should be. Young prospect for him. You might as well see what he's got in these full game situations. If he's got the stamina. Especially with the bat later in this game. Or in these games I should say. As that one will be f popped out to the warning track. Goodman with an easy play out there. As Jose Herrera is now in. For I believe Jake McCarthy. Out and right. A little bright back to that slider inside. Make him 
really feel uncomfortable. Now down 0-2. Try to get him to swing at something as we've now gone the entire distance of the inning with Rollison. And he does it. Perfect. Six up, six down, I believe, for Ryan Rollison. As the Diamondbacks bring in Tommy Henry. What does he have? Four seam slider curve and a change up. Good, good, really, it really is a good pitch repertoire that he has. A lot of guys have it. Four seamer and three breaking balls. And, and Jackson Holiday finally gets into one. See you later. First of many. 426, 107 off the bat. That's what he can do. That is why we went out and traded him, even if we really didn't. The CPU did it. But that is why you want this kid to develop. 19, maybe 20 years old going into this. Just absolutely ripped to right field. That's a lefty on lefty matchup too. As Nolan Jones does the same thing, he goes opposite field and he's on base. Totally gets into it. It's going to be a liner. And that's two down. Feeling pretty confident we're going to win this game though. No real worry about it as Bernabelle is back up here. Bernabelle really rips into that one. And that's going to be an automatic double. Warming Bernabelle putting on a show. Not a lot of people know him but we will know the name as he is heating up. And bad swing there from Tovar. That one's on me, but to rewatch this Jackson Holiday solo shot to right field, 430 feet. Goodness gracious me. Rosenthal 0 2 last year for the Tigers. Hopefully. It ends better than that. Is we know he's got gas, but can he put it together? The control and the composure to be in situations like this and just close it out. Not like this. One run, two run game. Can he close it out? As that will be an easy play. Bliss out out first. One down, and there he is. Corbin Carroll, who I would assume won Rookie of the Year last year. He, I think he should win it in real life. If he didn't in the game, I don't really know who would have. Although every time we played the Diamondbacks, it seemed like he wasn't on the field. So maybe he was injured. I don't remember if I ever looked. But man, he's up for even... Regular MVP as that one will get through and that is why he's up for those MVP voting in real life. So good at getting on base and when he is on base, the speed is key. You saw it in the top right corner, 98 speed, 56 steal, but that is way too low for him. He is a stealing machine. Maybe not quite on the level of Acuna yet, but he is a machine for sure. As Alec Thomas, another young gun for the Diamondbacks. He's doing pretty well in real life as well. As that one's going to be popped up. Diaz under it. Makes the play two down for Rosenthal. As Abraham Toro now. Don't know if he's having that bat. He subbed in a couple innings ago. K 
Can he keep the game alive? Trying not to get shut out are the Diamondbacks. But it's looking a little bit likely here for the newly born, well, newly rebuilt Colorado Rockies. And it's in there. He sits down looking. Rockies take game one of spring training. Blake Snell was on the mound to start it. Rosenthal finishes it. And Jackson Holiday, the star of the show, outside of that man, jerks and pro far. What a way to start the season. 14 hits. I know I was controlling all game, but still. I think Will Sim pretty much through. I'm going to stop right here with three games left in spring training. We're 13 to 9. You love to see it. Do we have do we have stats in spring training? I don't know if we do. We do. So, Crone hitting 317. No home runs surprisingly. Somehow three steals. Out of all people on this team, why does he have three steals? Snell is four and two so far through spring training. Rosenthal, 11 innings, 11 strikeouts. 0.82 ERA, that's exactly what we want from him. The whip is good as well. Ian Happ, three homers. I think we had one of them. Hitting almost 300. McMahon, right where we want him. In that 250 range. Chris Bryant. Maybe a little bit of a resurgence here. Hitting 317 in spring training. Martin Perez. Looking like he wants to be our ace. Jordan Hicks, that ERA is a little bit high. Same with the whip. But we have faith that that kid is going to keep on growing. Marquez, or Marquez, not horrible. That's actually pretty good. Don't know how much he's actually played. I mean, 14 innings, yes, but I don't think he's actually started for us. Matthew Boyd, really good numbers. Profar hasn't had a homer since that first game. Daza, two homers. Obviously, Miguel Sosa. It's a 73 overall. One of our draft picks. 18 years old. Only C potential. I cannot believe that. Holiday with that one home run. Hitting 208. See, this is, this is what I mean. He's just a little bit too young. No stats are going down, though. So that's good. Jimenez good in the relieving role. Montgomery hitting 182. Veen hitting 217. So he's the best so far of our prospects that we've brought up. And yeah, most of these other guys kind of doesn't matter too much. Joe Rock, zero ERA. He's only pitched that one inning that we pitched with him. So it's a good thing that we did, that he got some work. Jordan Wicks. So far, not too good. For the 24 year old who might go down and start in triple a with those numbers try to get the confidence back we go 15 and 10 wicks got the win there view the box score as zach veen pinch hit i don't doesn't look like Ian Happ with another homer. But it doesn't look like Jackson Holiday was in on this one. Which is fine. I mean, he's going to be in AAA to start this season. So. We will sim to the regular season. Lineups will be set. And they will look a lot different than this. Pitching rotation should stay about the same. I think we're going to want Sins and Taylor up there. Yeah. 
Brilliant really in the long relieving role should be decent. I want Wicks in medium relieving role. Yeah. Hicks in the setup. I'm liking our pitching rotation this year. Justin Lawrence was good for us. Obviously, Jimenez in real life has been decent for the Braves. Kind of, he's kind of hit or miss, but for the most part, he's all right. So we got some, we got some veterans in the bullpen now. Good starting rotation for the most part. Obviously, Senzatela overachieved for us last year, going 200 innings. Never went over 160 the entire rest of his career. So hopefully he keeps improving because he's got some good stuff on him. More of a pitch-to-contact guy, but he does have good pitches. Obviously, Marquez we're going to have to keep an eye on because, well, we don't want that number of 4.52. If we can get that down closer to 4, it'd be very nice. Did go 189 last season, so... But next episode, opening day versus the San Francisco Giants, and we are at home with Blake Snell on the bump. And I will see you guys there very shortly. But for now, take it easy and peace.